Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Yeah. Um, when you were coming on your screen and had a T, I thought it would have an NC for North Carolina. I always think of colleges and their color because North Carolina is that special blue. Well, I'm a Tar Heel born, I'm a Tar Heel bred, and when I die, I'll be Tar Heel dead. And, and you even like, are you looking through the book as I was refreshing myself with the book, there's a guy by the name of, I think his name, let me see, Michael, I don't know, he's, he's not that famous, Jordan or something like that. I'm joking. <laughs> yes, it seems like you, you, you are familiar with him from North Carolina. I was familiar in Chicago. He spoiled the daylights out of us. It was like, <laughs> why, are we, why are we losing a game tonight? It's, you know, and uh, that was a thrilling, uh, when you look at Chicago, I mean, Chicago basketball is getting a little better. But uh, yeah, that was quite a time. Now, did you see him in college? play a little uh, bit my claim to fame was i went to the uh final game in the super bowl between georgetown and unc carolina okay. wow. and he was a freshman and the picture that they put in sports illustrated you can see me in the background holding my hands up wow and um, he hit the final shot uh, with a couple of seconds left, and he won the game. But I'm yelling, don't let a freshman take the last shot. Ah, that's funny. <laughs> that's not a normal freshman. Yeah, and, but you know, as a basketball fan, if you said to me, you know, name five of the 10 most significant basketball games that you would have liked to see in the last 30 years, the game you were at, Georgetown in North Carolina. I mean, Georgetown was the team everybody wanted to hate for good reason, right? They just played, you know, they wanted, I think they wanted you to hate them, right? They played with their chip on the shoulder, but to see North Carolina against Georgetown, probably in that game, there was probably seven or eight NBA, maybe more players on that team. Anyway, I don't want to turn this into a whole basketball thing because <laughs> both Karen and I like basketball. Glad you're here. You know, it's interesting. I was uh, skimming up or reading up on, I love the cover of your book. Karen recently came out with a book, The Lamb of Wall Street. And I love the cover. I love the title. But as I was going through the, you know, the different chapters, I thought, wow, I could just take Karen's 15 chapters and that could be, that could give me a great template for a good option book. I mean, it was Find your passion. Don't be, you know, just a few of them. Chapter two, don't be driven by fear. Chapter three, learn from your mistakes. And in every chapter, Karen, I just think it's wonderful how you weave in, in each chapter, all the different areas of your life, you know, from growing up uh, to um, the, the, the ministry, which is the main thing, but then you always draw it back into okay, how does that, what's the applica applicability to, how does it apply with trading? Uh, learn from your mistakes, study it, then make it your own. I used to say these a lot. Uh, uh, keep the big picture in mind, take chances. Uh, remain patient. I don't know how many times in the last month with the market going ballistic, hey, for range bound stuff, this isn't, you know, be patient. This is a little goofy right now. And uh, endure and persevere. Don't give up hope. So I may have to call you one day and say, Karen, can I borrow all these titles? I'm just doing strictly an option book. It was very good. How do you, I mean, obviously there, there's m many things we can talk about and um, uh, trading, uh, ministry, different things that come in my mind. Uh, maybe I'll ask some wackier questions. You know, I, I would like to mention, yeah. um, I was fourth in line uh, when, and I was in Malawi, and those women had to walk four and five times a day to a dirty river mm. that was about a mile away to get their water. Mm. And uh, we had a lot of fun that day. Uh, but when I got back to the uh, village, I 
called all the people out and I said, I am putting in a water well in this village. And they all just uh, fell to their knees and uh, shouted hallelujah to God. It, it, it seems amazing that, that you know, when you, when you think of non-for-profits, when you think of helping the poor, when the needs are just so great, you can just say, where do you start? But it just seems unfathomable that in those countries, and again, obviously there's much more to it, political or, or, or factions and stuff that, you know, we take it for granted in the United States, you know, I can go take a shower. I can occasionally, right? I, I do, I even showered for this. I was, you know, I shout, you know, you don't, when you work at home, you can postpone the shower as long as you want. But I said, <laughs> I mean, with Karen, I got a good take. But I mean, we take it for granted what we can do with water. But in those countries, it's life or death. So um, I definitely want to touch on, I, I have some questions and uh, many of that in that area. I want to go real quick, probably the topic that will be the quickest. But just to mention it, I don't have that much interest in it because I know you. But I know some people would be listening. You know, the uh, Karen was trading, and then she had uh, a, I don't know a challenge. I don't know what you'd want to call it with the SEC. And I, I know obviously, you know, it's one of those. I remember with Mark Cuban saying, you know, going up against the SEC. And here's a guy with more money than most countries, right? And uh, you know, he was just saying, you know, you're not going to win. They're, they're going to have to settle or do something. How do you, and I know there's gag orders and all these things you mentioned in the book. What would you, what were some lessons you learned and, and what are your thoughts on that? I mean, when I look at the SEC and a lot of that, you know, my first thoughts knowing you is that, you know, they're able to blurt out, right? And say, this is this, this or that but you really can't defend yourself. You know, you, you know, it's, it's a tough thing, right? And it's, it's funny, I'm telling you it was a tough thing and you went through it, but um, what are you, what would you want to say or what did you learn from the whole SEC and what would you, you know, cause sometimes people can look at that and say, well, the SEC said this and, and the few people I've talked to, I said, no, there was no truth here that Karen got a chance to defend herself. You just run out of money. I mean, when, if you're going up against the SEC, you can't fight that. What would you like to say on that topic? And, and I promise we'll go quickly through that. But I think, and there's reasons. It's not that I know you. It's not that you wouldn't talk about it, but it's, it's A, it's passed. But B, I don't know if you can say much. Is that correct? Well, um, I'll share with you that I was in church uh, this past Sunday, and I knew the Lord started speaking to me. And um, he said, tell the story now. And I heard it in my heart. Um, I, as a, an American citizen, have the right to free speech. So I am removing that gag order and saying to you and all the people listening, uh, they took me to court. The judge pointed to me and said, you're not allowed to speak a word in my courtroom. And then the uh, SEC man got up and lied about everything I was doing. So, uh, and then I have an investor uh, that has sent uh, every book to, uh, sent this book yeah. to every senator and every congressman. And he included a letter in that book. And he mentioned the man by name that did that to me. Mm. Uh, and then uh, Mary Jo White, uh, 
um, sent out a report that said, we're going after the big companies and they have their own in-house lawyers. Mm. Uh, they're creating difficulties for us. Go after the smaller companies because they can't afford to fight us. Mm. And two weeks later, two members of the uh, Atlanta SEC walked into my office. Well, now, who's Mary Jo? She's the... She was the... Uh, under the Obama administration, she was the head of the SEC. Okay. So they did a, a uh, they, I only traded with the Chicago Board of Exchange and I was audited by the uh, CFTC and they didn't find a thing wrong with what I was doing and how I was trading. Um, the SEC didn't understand what a call and a put were, but uh, they hammered me down and took millions of dollars out of my foundation because I created that foundation uh, to do good all over the world. How have you, you know, when you go through something like that, um, yeah. obviously those are different life lessons. What have you, I know you have got much positive out of this because, you know, especially as a, as a Christian, uh, you know, you're trusting in God and you're not, you know, you can put it in perspective. What have you, how has this helped you? Which I know it has. I mean, uh, the positive of going through this type of, you know, battle that, you know, you can't, I mean, you can't win from a human level. I mean, you know, that yeah. doesn't mean they won. It just means from this, you know, uh, what are your I'm turning, I'm trying to turn. You can see my, my Barbara Walters here. I'm trying to turn from the, <laughs> the, you know, the negative, but there's a positive here, right? It's not that, you know, this isn't like poor Karen, her, her life is over. You're off to the race. This hasn't, you know, you're not sitting there all day saying, oh, woe is me, right? You're, you're, well, I know you, <laughs> you're, you know, you're using, you're looking at this, totally different. Yeah. Well, at first, um, I went down into a deep, dark hole, uh, and I went to see my pastor. Um, this is in the book. Yes, I was going to say. And um, he st stood up uh, from his chair. He had a, a, a large office. And he pushed his chair to my knees and walked to the back of his room and he said, Jesus is sitting in that chair. Talk to him right now. And I started crying and uh, he went over to his desk, picked up a box of tissue, handed it to me and he said, Jesus is sitting in that chair. You need to talk to him right now. And I started talking to him, and the more I talked, the more I knew Jesus was sitting in that chair. And the pain just lifted up and lifted up and lifted up and lifted up, and I felt the pain uh, just flow out of my whole body. Mm. And I haven't been in pain ever since for that reason um so oh, you haven't, you've kind of got over other than maybe occasionally like i like i would i'm not as forget i'd want to just a couple punches in their nose just just once in a while 
just, just a quick punch in the SEC's nose. I know that's not uh, 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 possible, but um, uh, I'm glad to see you're your, your, uh, looking at the positive of, of that situation. Um, because, you know, it's hard when you're in the midst of that probably to see it, but uh, other than occasionally wanting to punch them in the nose, but you, you can't do that. Um, switch you for a second, if, if, unless there's anything else you want to say on that area. Uh, I was going to switch to, um, I'm probably the best to go from like, maybe it's my ADD as a kid to go from one topic to the next quickly. Anything else you'd like to say in that? That well, uh, that just uh, brought me closer to the Lord. Sure, sure, right. Which and, is a great thing. Uh, uh, I, my life has uh, built back up, but Forbes magazine wrote a, a negative article about me. Uh, the Tennessean wrote a negative art article about me, asked me where, if I ever read the Tennessean or Forbes magazine. No. <laughs> right, right. And did they, did they talk to you before they wrote the article? Uh, the man that um, was running uh, Just Hope International went the day before uh, to, uh, asked the editor uh, about that article because he had read it and uh, he said, this is incorrect. And he was laughed at. Mm. So, so it showed all the, my pictures and uh, said uh, she committed fraud and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, but I picture Jesus Christ with a crown of thorns on his head, nailed to a cross, um, and he died saving me from my sins. I got nothing to complain about. Absolute right. And, and it's, it's, you know, because he is in control and it, it doesn't need to get too focused on. I mean, I did a couple times as, uh, I was having you say the last word on that issue, but I, I might have the last word uh, just to put in when when it came out with Karen. Um, what bothered me for a little bit until my focus got off of that and I'm where it should be was, you know, I even saw in the world of retail options, you know, people just to get a few clicks on their website and that's it. Just to get a few clicks on their website, there was about six or seven articles I saw. And, and, and you know, when you click on it, you know, because you can see I'd read the story and it was just, you know, they're all suddenly experts, right? They don't know anything other than what they read by the SEC. And, but when you look, when you click on the link, it always clicks back to their site. And just to sell a few of their $20 newsletters or whatever, you know, you click on a thing. And I just thought, you know, shame on you. You know, I, I just thought that, uh, but anyways, I mean, and then I got the focus just like you said, but it's just, you know, that's how some people, and you, you can't, you know, that they have, uh, and to me, it's intentional. You know, it's not that they didn't, you know, they chose because they get a couple clicks, you click on a busy story. And I don't know a lot about internet marketing, but they did that and anyways. Um, you should have had the last word on that, but I did. But anyways, switching <laughs> to trading for a second, and then we'll go to the uh, more of the uh, different countries and stuff. You know, right now in trading, you know, you talk in your book a little bit about the COVID debacle, you know, the 30% correction we had. Right now, we're slowly, slowly, slowly unwinding out of a 10% correction we had in January. And tell me as a, you know, maybe comp as a, the COVID thing, were, were you still with the hedge fund then? Uh, no, in 20. Uh, no, I had to give up the hedge fund. That's right. Fund. So in and, terms of, uh, yeah. Me, in uh, I 
uh, retired because I knew the uh, SEC was going to fire me. Oh, that's right, right. So how do you handle, you know, when, when retail traders, now you're more of a retail trader, right? Would that well, be I only trade for myself. Yes, I, I'm totally. not, I'm barred from ever trading for any human being again. So tell me, for the people listening, mostly retail traders, how do you, you know, when I think of chapter, you know, which is so appropriate for this last month, chapter two, don't be driven by fear. How do you handle when, you know, one of the toughest things is, you know, we've had, you know, two weeks ago, you're having a range between the high and the low of SPX of, a, you know, in the Fed announcement that Wednesday, 150 points between the high and the low. Uh, you know, when you get this fear, when you get this market going down, how do you as a retail trader look at that? Because sometimes, you know, people look, and it is, you want to be careful because I think liquidity uh, execution, I think is much better on the upside than the downside. It can be, you know, if you look at mid, mid prices and spreads on a fast down day, it's like, it's all over the map. How do you, you know, what would you say, to, you know, from your experience dealing with ups and downs and doing a lot of selling puts, right, in the in the SPX and stuff, ES, because the skew is much better, right? For a 20 delta put, you get a lot further out of the room than a 20 delta call. How do you handle that fear? I'll be honest with you. I struggle with that at times. I'm not as uh, Mark Fenton, who mentors with me, he's much better at it. I get, you know, I'm more cautious, but you you have a good perspective on that. Maybe share with, because, you know, you're going to get, it's not always going to be beautiful range bound and collect your paycheck when you're selling premium with options. How do you handle that? You know, what I'm, you know, these types of things as a retail trader, you know where I'm, what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I majored in applied mathematics at Carolina. So uh, I don't get emotional about it. I see it as a mathematical problem to solve. And uh, I know how to solve it. So uh, so when you sell a 20 or a 10 delta put, and the market starts I, dropping, you were I don't, the I probabilities. Don't, I don't look at the delta. Um, I, I know what Delta is, but I don't yeah. look at any of this VIX. I don't look at the Delta. Um, I just um, decide mathematically, I decide what I have to do. So you're selling, you may go look and say standard deviation or something. You're selling some out of the money options, right? Yeah. Yes. Generally. So when you're selling them, how do you deal with the, you know, it's easy. I always say it's easy to have a plan till someone punches you in the face, right? <laughs> and, and it's like, okay, I've got this iron condor on, right? Sell an out of the money call and put, and you buy your hedges if you'd like. If you don't want to do your hedges, you have a short strangle. But it's easy to say, okay, here's my plan. When it goes down, I'm going to do this, you know, when things are peaceful. But then when the market drops 100 points in the SPX, how do you stick with the plan? And again, you had positions on, you know, $100 million, $150 million or whatever. You know, you're human, right? How did you handle that? Well, um, I uh, recently went to... Uh, I'm I'm just trading for myself now, and right. I recently went to uh, Wednesdays week after week after week um, because uh, I'm so busy, um, and I went to Seven day options weekly, weekly options. Okay, okay. And I went to Wednesdays only, uh, and I look at that about one o'clock on Wednesday and just deal with it. Um, so are you selling like an out of the money? So with one week to go selling an out of the money put and call, are you doing the day? 
are you doing this? Are you trading Wednesday and it expires on Wednesday? Uh, I'm trading Wednesday and it expires that Wednesday. So I move it forward for a week. Um, but I don't, I'm not losing any money. Okay. And you're selling out of the money. Would you, would that be fair to say out of the money puts or calls? Yes, it, it would be fair to say. Now that would be, we might say in the options world, you gotta be a bit of a cowboy or a cowgirl to do that type of short-term trading. Again, I think what you said is you're relying on the mathematics. How do you deal with the fear though? You are human. I, 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 I'm not fearing anything. Um, okay. I just deal with the mathematics of it. Okay. And so, um, if, if, um, I don't want to get into a fear mode. Good. Yeah. Uh, I want to figure out the mathematics of it. Right. And, and then you'll have a risk management plan if it goes against you. I just deal with it, uh, every Wednesday. Uh, okay. it, it's, I don't look at the market till Wednesday every week. I got you. So you'll put the trade on and leave it kind of or? And, until the day it expires. I got you. And I'll either move it or I won't move it uh, because it's both sides are out of the money. Okay. Are you just selling, would it, selling strangles or what type of strategy? Well, um, I have been uh, in the money uh, and uh, on the uh, put in a call side, I'm selling calls. Uh, I hope to get out of selling calls sometime soon. But um, either one side of it is in the money or the other side of it in, is in the money, and I just deal with it. And um, I move it uh, one week or two weeks out, and I just deal with it. Uh, but I'm not losing money when I move uh, the puts and the calls out. So you move the challenge side out of the money or, or move it further out? Uh, move it further out. I got you. Okay. And what is the biggest kind of differences mentally you've had to adjust to trading a 200 million or whatever the number was fund to trading as a retail trader? Any big changes? Or are you trading similarly or? Well, I've, uh, uh, I've put on, um, uh a put spread and it's $50, uh, uh, sell a put and then $50 down buy a put. Uh, okay. I used to, uh, sell them, uh, singularly, uh, okay. but, uh, but I trade, I am the tortoise, not the hare and the okay. tortoise and the hare race. I cross the finish line every time. Sure. So you do like wide put credit spreads in the S. Do you like the SPX or are you dealing with a different product? I, I, I trade only in the SPX. Okay. We do too, mostly. Um, and you're going maybe just far enough out of the money that you're comfortable. Would that be fair to say? Well, um, I'm going further and further out of the money uh, until I reach a safe spot where um, I put a uh, iron condor on uh, this past Wednesday that was 300 points out of the money on the put side and 200 points out of the money on the call side. Well, that's that's right, and that's a great. I mean, when you when you look over the last month with VIX getting up near literally a little over two weeks ago on a Wednesday, two weeks ago, Wednesday, VIX closed at 31. Now it's come down quite a bit, but what's nice to see is it is you bringing up the mathematics, you know, people look at, well, there's no way I'm trading an iron condor, but it's like Mr. Market is calling you on the phone and saying, well, Karen, 
here's the deal. The deal is I'm going to give you an extra 150 points out of the money. I'm going to give you a better credit. Not that it ever makes you feel totally comfortable, but boy, I was looking at even over the last month, some 40 day iron condors, different ones. I mean, you got from here to Buffalo, New York, and the, I mean, you got so much room on these things that, I mean, it would literally take, you know, a very low probability event for these to get in trouble. And, and when, you're, when you're selling premium at very high VIX levels, I'm not saying you, you have to be diligent, but you're, like you said, you're getting a lot of room. If VIX goes back and the volatilities go lower, you're going to miss that because you're not going to get, I mean, it'll still work, but you're not getting, you're not going to get 300 points out of the money. So it is nice to, uh, uh, to do that. Let me ask you, when you were trading as a fund, like most of us retail traders, whether you're with Think or Swim or whatever Tasty Works or uh, Interactive Brokers, whatever the brokerage firm, you know, we just go electronically and do the order. You know, and, and I think execution is, you know, 90% of the time, very good uh, in SPX. Um, 10%. You know, it depends what's going on with the market and what you're doing. When you were trading the fund, did you do it electronically or did you, you probably just called the, the guy up in the pit, you know, for like bigger traders we that we've had in our community, they were able to just call the broker and do it. Did you like to do it electronically or did you go it through a person or how did you do it? I put, uh, I had, uh, four people working in my office and we put every order on electronically electronically okay so you didn't you didn't we use keyed in every order <laughs> okay i like I, i'll tell you why i like because so you didn't use like a special broker in the pit no i like that because you know what you're more it's more discreet you don't they don't know what you're doing also right whereas if you're calling in okay Here's the lady from Tennessee, and, and and they can lower the bids a little bit. Whereas if you're just going in, sell 200 of these, 200 of these, you're in control more. And yeah. I, I was just thinking about that today. Uh, and uh, so, um, do you still enjoy trading? Uh, uh, yes, I do. Um, but... Even when we're having a correction. So you have that. You're. I have a lot of a lot of admiration for you. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed it more in uh, July and August. It, you it, learned the SEC took my uh, personal money away, and then they went into the foundation. They went after Just Hope International and learned that they couldn't go after a five hundred one c three that people contributed to. So. Um, I was moving money. I was building up that foundation with the money I made. Right. And it had millions of dollars in it, but I was using that um, effectively uh, to uh, help Just Hope International out. And uh, they saw that foundation and they took millions of dollars out of it. Which they weren't supposed to, right? Uh, no, that that's not a 501c3. Okay, that's okay, 50, okay. So Just Hope International was a 501c3, so they uh, found out that they could, they uh, sent out uh, one document that said, Karen Bruton and Just Hope International. I got you. And then they sent out another document, Karen Bruton and Just Hope Foundation, because they found out that they couldn't take uh, money out of a 501c3. Mm. We weren't supposed to go back to talk about the SEC. That was your fault. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, because they've got a gag order on me. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, it's, but, it's, uh... I don't care anymore. I uh, they, uh, as an American citizen, I have freedom of speech. 
and I'm taking that route. Yeah. No, I agree. It's just, it just, uh, yeah. Uh, well, we love you, Karen, and I appreciate <laughs> you. You can freedom of speech anytime you want here. <laughs> yes, freedom of speech anytime. I'm all for that. And, uh, um, oh, Jim said we had a question. I think what factors do you look at mathematically when you plan? Oh, I think he's just looking for maybe specifically more probabilities. Would that be in the world of mathematics that you're or standard deviations or something like that, Karen? Or how would you answer that? Well, um, I uh, try to trade effectively and I look at all the um, uh, iron condors that I could put on uh, to cover the cost of what it was costing me to move forward. Okay. And I look at that. I look at that next Wednesday and uh, I'll be in the money or out of the money. So maybe looking at the expected range and stuff like that a little bit or? Well, I, I look at I test everything out to uh, get where I don't lose money moving it forward. And I got uh, you. By I'll, rolling. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll put on uh, little trades to make up the money that I lost, uh, rolling it out of the money. Yeah. But I put on uh four and five hundred uh lower puts and two or three hundred uh, increased uh calls okay. and I make up that uh spread that I'm I'm losing moving money. So just rolling further out in duration, farther out of the money type thing. Yeah, I I roll one or two weeks. I gotcha. And uh, well, good, good. It's good to, good. Yeah, it's just good to talk. You know, one thing I was thinking, switching a little bit to the found, uh, foundation. What's the word? I call it a ministry, but it's what do you call it? New Hope. Uh, just Hope just Foundation hope. or Just Hope okay. International. Yeah. When I when I think of non for profit, you know, I I think, and you know, we've talked about this before, but it. Um, uh, oh, let me just ask. There was one more question. Uh, I wanted to switch, but someone stopped me. They said, "Out, up, down, and add capital." Yeah. So, Al, it sounds like what Karen, Karen, correct me if I'm wrong. If Karen will put a trade on, if it goes against her, she'll roll it out a little bit further duration, more out in time, and you might even you might even increase the capital a little bit too, right? Um, I don't increase the capital on that trade, I, I uh, move it uh, down or up uh, a little bit and then put on further out trades uh, to cover the, the loss. I got you, if it moves that much. Okay. Yeah. Um, switching to um, New, uh, just, just hope. Just hope know, international. Just hope, just hope international. You know, when I think of, you know, because it is, there's so much need out there in the world, and you help them, and it just sounds like everything you did is trying to help them that that they can instead of just dumping money there, um, to help them survive on their own. A is just hope still it's still still going right Which it's is still going and yeah. um i've been um bored to death these last two years that i've been home oh, yeah. you um, can't go, right i was in a, the um i was in the uh capital of i was in dubai when they announced that uh, COVID was breaking out all over the world wow. and I had to get home. Uh, and I caught the last 
airplane out of Dubai hmm. and got home and then they shut a lot of the airports down. Um, and I've been bored to death uh, for wow. two years and I'm going to Romania in April. Um, Wonderful. Okay, so you're back you're back doing some tr Romania. Back and doing some work. And this you, is the first time I've been to Romania. What are you looking to do? Is it more just assess the situation or, or do you already know what you're going to be doing there? Well, um, uh, uh, the woman that formed Uncaged, she and I are going together. Uh, Uncaged is uh, meaning uh, the the people are little girls are stolen, uh, teenagers are stolen, stolen, uh, women are stolen, and forced into having sex with a man every half hour, and and the people uh, doing that are making millions of dollars. And this is uh, in Romania. This is in Romania. This is. Uh, I'm going to Romania, which is the uh, uh, site where it's the biggest country that this is dealing in. Uh, the government, some of the government figures are on, are taking a part of this too. They're earning, uh, they're being paid capital. Um, but Nashville is one of the largest centers in the world where this has taken place. And I've met a woman that um, was uh, forced into slavery here and she's been on my heart ever since because she put in a recording under her bed and she had uh, men coming in every half hour having sex with her and she recorded all that wow. and then she escaped a couple of months later and uh, the rest is history. Yeah, Dan, a student uh, here, he mentioned he's from Iowa. He says Iowa is a huge trafficking hub. Uh, also, I mean, you see signs everywhere, whether it be South Carolina or whatever. And I think that's, I mean, when you think of that type of a problem, it's like, where do you start, right? Because like you said, if it reaches into the government and stuff like that, that puts a few more loopholes in there or a few more things to deal with. Right. But, um, that's wonderful that you're so the first time in two years you've traveled. Yes. Abroad. That's exciting. I mean, yes, that's yes. I, I am uh, so excited to go to Romania with the founder of uncaged and, uh, learn about, she has, uh, purchased property there and she is ministering to women uh, and it takes one to two years to uh, uh, just um, bring closure to the women who have experienced this. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, I, I have met so many women all over the world whose husbands are beating them or, or uh, wor they're working in the field and their husband is sitting under a palm tree drinking palm wine and they've got a baby strapped to their back. Um, I want to dedicate the rest of my life to hmm. women. Wow, well, that's, uh, well that's, yeah, and that, that's, uh... Yeah, it's that's all totally different. You know, when you think of helping other countries, it's nicer to talk about well, we're going to build a well, or we're yeah. going to do this, and that's a more fun subject. But this is, you know, this is reality, and this is, you know, 
you know it's all over because there's not many cities that I've traveled in where you see signs on the street. You know, when my girls were in college, they were talking to this to them about this type of topic at the college and be careful where you, you know, girls getting kidnapped at malls. And you don't yeah. think those things happen outside of Romania. They happen everywhere. And, they happen uh, every. It, it happens everywhere, so, but R Romania is the biggest country that is happening in. Yeah. Well, Karen, I appreciate you you coming in here and and talking. We'll have to get together because I don't want this to be the only way that we interact by Zoom. Um, but I think it's. Uh, uh, I would encourage people not not from a uh, just to buy the book. From a financial, I think it's it's just it encouraged me reading the Lamb of Wall Street was just, you know, it's life, right? It's good to read, you know, it's great to read an options book, but a lot of times I don't make it through most options books. You know, it's just, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like okay. Whereas here, you're bringing in, you're weaving in each chapter, life, trading. Uh, now the only thing, folks, if you do get the book. I want to warn you ahead of time. Uh, if you're a basketball fan, and, and especially if maybe you're from Duke or somewhere, she does quote Michael Jordan at least six, seven times in the book. <laughs> yes. So if you're a big, I actually went to the same high school as Coach K. Not that I'm a, a big Duke fan or anything, but uh, you know, if you can, if you're a Duke fan and you can get through those seven Michael Jordan quotes, you'll be okay. So thank you. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to, about the book or anything else you'd like to uh, add or share, Karen, before we uh, call it a day? Um, no, uh, I, I am blessed by you and uh, you interviewing me and uh, and I have uh, torn the gag order off of me and I, I will speak honestly about what the SEC did to me. No, I, I appreciate it. We, we, we support you and uh, we love you and we'll, we'll keep in touch with you. And we, we wanna hear more of uh, what you do in the future. We'll have you back from time to time. If you could put up with me for <laughs> 25 minutes or an hour, we'll continue this, but thank you so much, Karen, appreciate it. And I wanna come see you in Knoxville. Yeah. You're, you're welcome to come and uh, there's no North Carolina blue out there, out here, uh, but- uh, So I'll wear North Carolina blue. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. I learned, uh, you know, it, it's funny when, when you're in, in Knoxville, you have the orange, right? For to University of Tennessee. But when I'm in Greenville, South Carolina, you have orange of Clemson. And I remember getting into an argument, not an argument, a discussion with someone and they're yelling at me saying, no, 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 they're, I said, both oranges are the same. And they said, no, no, you don't understand. You know, our orange is a special, you know, and it just shows you how crazy SEC, ACC sports is in the South. Um, it, it, it's different, but anyways, thank you, Karen. And, and always good to see thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see All you right. later. Bye. See you later. Bye.